a testosterone gel and comparing it to cream. Bit of the same thing. He asked, what, what about Tostran gel with 60 milligrams a day as a normal dosage? How do you compare it to transcrotal cream with 100, 150 milligrams twice a day? If the absorption of the cream is even better, how can you explain that? So testosterone gel was a, a name brand product uh, known as androgel in the U.S. It was uh, pushed a lot for two reasons. One, it was often picked up by insurance for guys who met the lab ranges, which, as we know, over the years have changed significantly. So it's not really covered much anymore. It was also very pricey. It's only 1.62% actual testosterone with comparison to a 10 or 20% in a compounded cream. The base that is used for it is a water base and it does have some alcohol and you cannot apply it to the scrotum. The gel generally goes on the shoulders or on the arms uh, and there is risk there of uh, transference. There is also a minimal absorption ratio and most guys it is literally just sufficient to shut them down without adequately replacing their doses. So we find guys are far from optimal and you have to remember the mainstream um, primary care physicians that have been treating with the gels for years due to the minimal invasiveness and just the fact that it's an easy sell and then all the pharmaceutical reps that are coming in pushing it, really all they're shooting for is what they call a normal level of testosterone, but normal is far from optimal. If you're going to come back on treatment in the 400s, they're going to be happy with that. They're going to say, hey, look, you're in, you're in the normal range. They like to, to use people's age against them and say, well, you're 60, you're good for your age. I don't want to be good for my age. I want to be good for, for a human being. I want to be good for a man, right? Just because I'm 60 doesn't mean that I want to treat myself to be 60. I want to feel like I'm 25 or 30. So long as I can stave off any potential risks or side effects and I can reap the benefits and rewards of my treatment. If you're already good, look, the goal here is to have a well-functioning body. And if you're fortunate enough to have quality genetics and a lifestyle that's conducive to provide this to you naturally, kudos to you, all the best. Most of us do require some level of intervention as we age. And if you're going to treat, then treat to optimize. Don't treat for normalcy. Normal is no longer a desirable state. Your normal average American is obese, diabetic, out of shape, no energy, no libido, sexual dysfunctions, and is not the epitome of what I strive to be at any point in my life. So to call me normal or to, to tell me you're normal is an insult. I don't want to be normal. I want to be optimal. And optimal does not mean super physiological per se. It means that I want to feel my very best, have the best quality of life for the time that I'm here and mitigate any potential risks and side effects and not take any years off the back end for the sake of instant reward. As long as I can do that safely and efficiently, that is optimization. This is testosterone optimization. This is not testosterone normalization. Because if you were at 300 and the lab said 350 is normal, and your primary got you to 351 and said you're good, find a new physician. That is not the way this should be treated. Gels, in short, are one of the worst ways to treat. I'll put them up there with pellets tied for first. Pellets have their own issues. We have a whole video on that as to why. Um, but gels are essentially going to be your worst option when it comes to self-administration methods. Okay, I completely agree.